Hi, Morten here. Today I'll be tying uh, a big fly for perch. Uh, this is a favorite fly we've been in for a couple of years. It actually derives from two old patterns, uh, which I did almost 20 years ago. Um, a small marabou fly like this, in especially the color she trues, and this flash streamer. And that merged into being this one now, which is the, yeah, you could call it a flash beast or whatever. You could do it in different colors, but this is my favorite one. The hook I'm using is uh, an Eric's hook. It's a 4-0. Uh, I do the perch flies in 4-0 and 2-0. And, and, and I prefer them with a small barb, actually, when it comes to perch. I mean, pipe flies, I always use uh, barbless hooks, but for perch, I think it's uh, it's an advantage to have a small a small barb. I just make sure that it's firm and secure in the vise. I use white tying thread. You can use what color you, you want. It's a Vivus, it's a 140D, uh, pretty strong one and works really well for this kind of patterns. The tail or the back part of the body, you can call it, is just uh, flashable. It's a mix of holographic silver, pearl and, and normal silver. And uh, just grab a small bunch of, a small or small, it's maybe not that small, but it's it's a bunch. It's a little bit too much, I think. It's only come down to a feeling when you you select how much material you want to use. I want to taper this a little bit before I tie it in. So I grab it on the middle and then I can pull the fibers in both directions so I don't get an even cut. I want it tapered a little bit like this. And then I tie it in so it's the under part or the back part is a little bit longer than the this one. So I get a natural tape on the fly. Just double it around the thread and then do like this. Secure it with a few wraps here. And then you just pull this backwards. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to do this, but we'll manage in the end. Then you have the first part of the fly actually. I normally secure this with either varnish or a little bit of glue, but I prefer varnish here actually. That was the first part. Then I need I need to color, put some color on the back of this fly. I know I'll start here already. So I put on some holographic holographic uh, chartreuse flash, just a small bunch. It's a little bit too long, so I cut a little bit of that off. And same procedure as before, tapering it a little bit. Grabbing on the middle and then pulling, pulling the flash fibers. Make sure that the it has the same length as the first part, or maybe a little bit longer. Same procedure. Like that. Looks nice. Then the next one. This is a grizzly fiber, also from Hedron Placebo, very soft. Pulling on the fibers a little bit, tapering, measuring, 
Got it. Doubling it and then tying. And just have a quick look if it looks okay. I think it does actually. It should be fine here. And now again, a little bit of varnish or super glue if you prefer that. I'm not a really good friend of super glue, so I, I'll use varnish as long as I can. I will use Sabagab as well, but right here I'll use just use the, the varnish. Then I make a big dubbing loop. Make sure that you uh, your thread in here is uh, or your thread loop is closed. So I normally just use the thread a, a Put it around a few times to make sure that there's no gap between between the two, two threads here. A new bunch of flashy blue here. Sufficient. Also here, I've just cut a little bit off because it shouldn't be longer than the than the body or the back back part of the body. So I and same procedure as before, tapering this a little bit. And then I put the flash in the dubbing loop and spread it out. Like that. It, look, it looks a little bit messy, but it's uh, you can easily get the fibers out I, either with your finger or use a scissor or a dubbing needle. I normally use my fingers in the beginning and then I finish off with it. Normally just my scissors to, sh to make sure there's no small loops in there. I want it as clean as possible before I wrap this. It makes it more durable and, and more beautiful as well, I would say, if it matters. It matters a little bit to me. It should look nice in the box as well, not just nice for the fish. For the fish. Let's get the thread out of the way here. Just grab it a bit forward. Then I double the flash, like you do with a haggle or whatever. You can moisten your fingers a little bit before you do this to make sure it, it stays there. You can apply some pressure as well. You can actually, the flash fibers, you can, you can be pretty rough to them actually. They won't break. And then just one turn of the sign, stroking the fibers backwards for each turn. This will also cover the, the thread bump you made from making the back part of the body. So you're ready for the next, the next materials to be tied on. Take your time doing this so it, it, it looks neat. I think we got it now. And I just back off the thread I moved before before. I'm securing a few wraps before I cut out.
then I add some thread wrap wraps to the to the last wraps of flash, just to make sure it, it's it's uh, it's well secured. And even though this, this fly is made for 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 perch, you probably catch a few pikes as well. So you need to tie this fly so it's really strong and durable. Next thing I need to put on the back here as well. So a few strands of uh, holographic chartreuse uh, flashy boo. The same materials as we did for the first part actually. So, and the same thing again, I'll do this all the time. I don't have to explain this anymore. Uh, tapering the, the flash here, measuring it, make it a little bit longer than, than the body itself. So it looks nice. Doubling it, tying it in. Like that. Okay. Next one. A few fiber, fibers of the, the grizzly looking flash. Same thing again. Tabor measuring and tie in. Like that. That's actually the, and you can call it the first part of the body or the back part of the body, which is actually the one we had from the, the flash fly I showed you in the beginning. Now, I, the only thing I need to do now is adding a, a small feather here. It's a marabou feather, chartreuse, of course. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty neat feather to use for this. It's, people think that marabou is not strong. I think it is. It's, a, it's pretty durable for a lot of, a lot of fish actually. I just tie in with the tip first. I try to choose the feathers with the thinnest stem so it looks nice in the fly. I always tie in with the tip first. Like that. And before I wrap, I'll apply some more varnish, just a little bit. You can't do this too often, actually. I might even have forgot a few times here when I was tying the first part. I think it's it's pretty important to do this to make the fly durable. Same procedure. Doubling the haggle, as we did with the flash. A little bit of moist will help. I might just move this out of the way a little bit. Pulling the fibers backwards for each turn and, and try to wrap, wrap the feathers with as close turns as possible. And same thing again here. We will cover the thread bump we made when we added the back of the the fly before. So we always e end up with a nice and clean front of the fly here. I think we can actually wrap the whole feather here. Yeah, it looks okay. And we're backing the thread again. One more time. Finishing off the haggle. And the same procedures we did when we had done the, the flash haggle, we just add a few wraps on top of the marabou to secure. Like that. 
Okay, so far so good. Now I'll be uh, <laughs> adding some bells and whistles. It will be a uh, uh, rattler. So I need to just make a layer fret on the hook before I do that, before adding rattles. Just like that. Let's see. I'm using uh, I'm using hairline small plastic fly rattles. I think it works really well, and it's quite durable. And there's a lot of sound on these. You could probably hear this. Uh, do I catch more fish with this one? Then I don't know. I just like to think it it works, and uh, uh, haven't seen that it doesn't work. So I add them like this. It doesn't look beautiful, but it doesn't really matter because when the fly is finished, it'll be covered underneath um, all the rest of the materials. So even though it looks it looks really nasty right now, it it will it'll be okay. Just make sure it's on the top here, so it's and it's and it's pretty secure with thread wraps wraps. And I go forward a little bit and go down on the hook shank again, creating a new layer of thread here, like that. And now I'll be using, um, it's a pretty neat material actually, it's from, it's from Feynman Fishing Company, it's plain chuckles body tubing. It's, uh, it's a pretty stiff material, but it has its purpose here. It will be tied in as a, as a spreader on the fly. So what I'll be doing now is just an, an use, uh, I think it's five centimeters or something like that on this fly and just do like this. It's pretty stiff, as I said, so you need to work it in there. And then again, as I said before, it might not look, not look beautiful now, but this will all be covered by materials later so it doesn't really matter just firmly secure it then i'll add some super superglue now it's the super glue time i'll be adding quite a lot actually to make this make this last a lot a lot of fish I think you're fine there. Normally I would let, let this dry for a few minutes before I work with it. I'll just do a little bit more before I have it. I prepared a fly before we started this so I can continue there, but I'll just show what I'll be doing before I do that. Uh, I add a, a user lighter and then they just a little bit, not too much, not too little. It's a little bit, <laughs> it's a feeling. And then you just, pressure this backwards and then forward again like this. Then you create a, uh, I think it was a little bit further, there it is. It doesn't look good right now. It's, it's pretty bumpy and big, but as again, it, it will be covered with all the, the materials in the front part of the body. The idea here is that when you, you would do like this, and then you have this as a spreader for the rest of the fly. So we'll be applying a lot of materials in the front here. Before I do that, I'll add some more Saba Gap. And I hate this actually. It always sticks to my fingers, which it shouldn't. So what I'll be doing right now is I'll just finish this off and let it dry. Normally I just sit, let it sit here and let it dry for maybe 
three or four minutes or so. But we don't have three or four minutes, so I've prepared another one for you, which has dried for quite a while. So I'll just make a quick change here. So, what I'm doing now is I will be... We need to put some gills on this fly. And then again, it's uh, orange, orange marabou. Pretty long fiber, actually. Could be a little bit shorter, but not longer than this. Same procedure as before. Uh, tie in the tip first. Like that. Secure with a few wraps. Double the haggle. Eat some marabou. Not the chocolate marabou, but the feather marabou. Just like that. I think that'll do it. Secure a few firm wraps. Cut off. And then finish off with a few overhand knots here. Just put on a little varnish here. You, you, it's just to to make sure it sits there. It, it will be covered by the the spreader here, so it will be very well protected, I think. And you do like this. And now we have the gills underneath the spreader and then we can finish off the fly in front here. Actually now what I'm going to do now is almost the same procedure as we did on the back. Uh, starting out with, uh, with some silver flashy boo in a dubbing loop. Like that, put on the cutting twister, grab some flash. Um, I prefer to use it a little bit more now in the front to make the front part of the fly bigger than the back part of the fly. So I've, I've, I'll pick out a little bit thicker bunch than we did in the, in the, in the back part. But same procedure as before. We don't want these cuts to be even, I want them to be tapered. Just a little bit at least. Here we go. Put this sponge in the loop. Spread it out. Normally let it hang on the middle, but you can even you can even do the tapering here actually, just letting some of the some of the part of the, some of the bunches hang to the left side and the other ones to the right side. So it's uh, you can still affect how the fly will look when you do like this. I think it's yeah, it looks pretty. Okay. Do the spinning. Not too much, not too little, as usual. Then we need to pick out the small loops in here. We don't want those. 
can see I just catched one of the marabou feathers here or the fibers just remove that I used the fingers in the beginning I think that's that's easier actually and then in the end I just used the point of the scissors I don't I don't use scissors I, I really point it just like this if they're too pointed there's a little risk that you maybe cut some the fiber or some even cut the thread. I don't want to do that right now when you have all this flashing here. But do this uh, with a little bit of care and take your time so it so you get a a nice as fly as possible. Put on my thing here and then just wrap it. Double the haggle, flash haggle in this case. Moisten your finger a little bit. The first few wraps here can be a little bit tricky because you have the spreader there, which is actually a little bit in, in the way here, but just take your time, it'll be fine. It might look a little bit messy in the beginning, but just do it slowly. And try to stroke as many fibers backwards as, as possible for each wrap. It's a little bit tedious, but you'll get there. I think. It will get easier for each turn here actually. You get more room, especially behind the behind the wraps here, which is creating some small problems now and then. If you see that you're creating some loops that you don't want, they can just either cut them up or try to pull them out. a little bit messy but it'll be okay Just secure the thread here I think I need to clean this up a little bit but we'll do that just do this first I can see that I get a few loops here which I don't want. Just cut them with a scissor. And then do it like that. That was the first part of the front part. Same procedure as before, now we need to put on the back. Uh, first we'll put on some chartreuse, holographic flashaboo from Hedron, which is soft and limp, which is really nice. Makes, gives your fly more movement, movement than in the water. Doing a little bit of tapering here again.
like that. Tie in the top. And the same thing with the grizzly colored, also chartreuse. Same procedure. Tabling. Important. Very important. Yes. Double. Starts to look like a fly. Then we we'll put on the marabou feather. Before I do that, I'll just add some, apply some varnish. As I said, you can use, you can use. Uh, Sabag as well, if you are more confident with that. I'm not. I use varnish still. I'm old fashioned. I'm sorry. That's just how it is. Then we. Uh, the feather I'll be using here is uh, a fine barred mallet. <laughs> no, fine barred. Fine black barred marabou feather from Hairline. These are really, really nice feathers. It's. Uh, you can see it here. It's uh, it's got some black barrings there. It's uh, it's quite expensive, but it's uh, one of the nicest feathers I, you can get, I think. I just select the one with the the longest soft stem, which I think this was, was the one. And same thing here. I'll add, I'll tie it in with the tip first, trying to get as many fibers as possible onto the fly. As I said, it's pretty expensive. You need you want to use as much as possible. Just do like that. Double the haggle. As usual, moisten your fingers a little bit to make sure that you get the fibers lying backwards. Then with take it really, really easy. One wrap at a time. The stem will, of course, get big, uh, thicker and thicker, but you'll also get, I'm tying, you know, I'll getting be closer and closer to where I only have the, the hook shank, so it, it doesn't really matter, and we'll be putting on a big head in the end, so I don't mind just using a little bit of the feather where the stem is thick as well, even though it, it adds some bulk up here, but it, it'll be covered with Cover the head with the head. Just want to have a look here before I might want to take one more rapid action, even though the stem is thick. Yeah, I think it it will do. There's still room for putting on the head. I can see. I just secure here. With a really firm wrap or two or three before I cut the feather. I cut the stem of the feather. 
I'm trying to not to tie down any of the of the fibers here actually just try only to tie on the stem and then I cut here without cutting the thread hopefully just like that what do you think does it look good Now we're almost finished actually with the tying at least. Now it's the only gluing. <laughs> and just secure a little bit here. And then I'll just finish off with a few quick knots here. Add a, add a little bit of varnish again. You can see how uh, the the flash and the marabou feathers are covering the orange feathers in there. I think it looks really nice when you can see the orange kind of come through the uh, come through the other fibers. It looks really natural to me, at least. I think hopefully the fish will see it too. Uh, the only thing I need to do now is uh, I'll be I'll be adding an eight and a half millimeter. Uh, fish mask in clear. It's uh, I prepared one. I'm normally putting on the eyes before I I put on the head on the fly, but it, they look like this. It's just a clear head. I added some. In this case, I added some 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 Deer Creek uh, gator eyes. I think they look really cool. I can. I've done a lot of different eyes in these flies, it, and it probably doesn't really matter. But it's just your personal own choice. It's a pretty easy thing just to do like that now. Squeeze it on. Whoops. <laughs> just need to do it again. Just like add the thread in front here. We got it. Just squeeze a little bit backwards here, so you get it in the right position. The only thing you need to do, you're not you're not securing the the head with the thread. You just create a a bump in front of the head. That's what you're doing when you do this. So you just add as much thread as you need. You just want to have it in the middle as well, so it looks good. And swims right. I think we're almost there actually. I don't want to apply too much thread either. And you it looks it will look the head will look bulky. I think this I think this is actually at least from my view it looks okay. I'll just just finish it off. That was not very good actually. I think I'll just use my whip finisher today. If I got one. Ah, we'll use it easy, the easy way. We'll just put some we'll put some UV glue on the top of this anyhow, so it'll work. Just like that. Just a final check before I put on the UV glue. Is it sitting in the right position? I think it does now. And I'll just add some, in this case, it's there's a lot of different brands of UV glue out there. The one I'm using here is from Pro Sport Fisher. And I use the Thin Flex as the first coat. And then I add some thicker a little bit later. It's uh, just to Make sure that this will sit. 
where it shoots it. Just like that. I think that was a little bit too much actually. I just tried to remove a little bit of it. Just like that. And then the, the magic torch. Like that. And the fly is finished. Normally I'll put on a second layer of UV glue. I'll not do that right now. It doesn't, it doesn't have to, but it, you, it just to make it even stronger than it is now. So I'll just sit, let it sit here for a little while and you can have a look. It's the Flash Tail Beast in Chartreuse. Uh, you can of course do this in a lot of different colors. I do it in a, in a brown, black, copper variant as well uh, which is fished really well when it when the light is fading but when it's during the day I prefer this one the, the chartreuse silver flash tail beast with a little rattle in there go fish <laughs>